let's do a physics problem. A physics problem that I kind of made up, but I think it will help us understand the relationship between electric field and change in electric potential. So just a quick review, the basic idea what I want to do is to do this two different ways. I want to calculate the change in potential going from point A to point B near this electric dipole. So a dipole, in case you don't remember, a dipole is a collection of two equal and opposite charges separated by distance s. Uh, I have a video, and if you need it, let me know. I'll put it down below if you can't find it. It derives the magnitude electric field along the axis of the dipole, and I have one that derives the electric field along the, the magnitude electric field along uh, a perpendicular to the axis. So along the axis, if you're far from the dipole, which I didn't draw here, but I wanted to draw it, it's 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 2 qs over r cubed, where this is the distance r, and on this axis, it's 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught qs oh, oh, r cubed, over r cubed. And so I can calculate the magnitudes of those. Also, now if I want to calculate it at other places, that doesn't work. And we're going to do that. Uh, so then we define the change of potential as the integral, the negative of the integral of E dot DL. It's the, in, the path integral of the electric field along some certain path. So imagine that I want to do that going from here to there along this path. I'm going to do a straight line path. Okay, so that's not trivial, right? Because Yes, I have an expression for the electric field here and here, but in between, the electric field right here is pointing that way, but then it's like this, 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 right? So it, it changes direction. So this actual path integral is non-trivial. It's not impossible. Let's not say it's impossible because it's not, okay? But uh, there is another way, right? And this is something that you see... Uh, quite a bit. If I calculate the potential at A, so I want V W R T infinity. So this is the potential of point A with respect to infinity. So I can use this electric field to find a generic version for the electric field with respect to infinity. And then I can, so I can get V A. I can call that V A. We do this a lot Potential is a change because it's a path integral, but we do this a lot. VA, VB, then I can say delta V is VB minus VA. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to find an expression for the potential at point A. I'm going to find an expression for the potential at point B and then take the difference between those two. After that, if you stick around and wait for the fun, I'm going to build a numerical model in Python to move along this path and calculate the change of potential numerically and compare those two. It's going to be fun. Okay, so let's find VA first. So let's find VA using this, right? Because what I'm going to do is to integrate from here, infinity, to here. And that will give me the potential at A. Okay, so let's start off with this expression. I'm going to draw this real quick. Here's my dipole, here's my point, um, and here's my field. E axis, I'll put it as that. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 2 qs over, I'm going to call this x cubed because I'm on the x axis, and it's in the x direction. So that's the first thing that we're going to do is to take the dot product. So E dot dl is just going to be Ea dx. Now, problem. I made this mistake a billion times, so I'm just letting you know. The mistake I made was to say, oh, I'm moving this way, so my dl is negative, and it's not. Okay. You get the direction, the direction of the path integral depends on your limits of integration, not on that dl. Now, it's not true numerically, though. So I can calculate va. It's going to be negative the integral from infinity to point A, I'll call this R, let's just call that R, I'll get a generic expression, of E dot DL. So that's going to be negative the integral. And this is negative because this is really a potential energy, and when you do potential energy, it's a work, and you move it to the other side of the equation. But you knew that already. So it's from X equals infinity to R of E, which is just this, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 
2QS over X cubed DX. Well, that's not hard because pretty much everything in that equation is a constant. Let's pull all that constant stuff out front. Negative 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. 2QS, the integral from infinity to R of DX over X cubed. So here I can just use the power rule. So the, this is x to the negative 3. Uh, when, I use, when, it, when I integrate with the power rule, you add 1 to that. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So this is x to the negative 2. And then I divide by negative 2. So this is going to be equal to VA is negative, negative. That canceled, and that 2 canceled. So I get 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught QS. And then I have 1 over x squared from infinity to r. So if I put in my limits, I get 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught qs over r squared minus 0. Because once I put in infinity and in for 1 over x squared, I get 0. So that's my potential right there as a function of r. Okay. So I can put in my value for r, and we will do that in just a second. Um, but that's it right there, box. Let's put it like this. There, that's equal to that. Okay, now I need to do the same thing along the axis. So let's draw our dipole again. Here's my plus. Here's my minus, greatly exaggerated. Now I want to start from here, infinity, to over here, a distance away. And I want to calculate delta V is negative E dot dl from infinity to r. But in this case, dl is going to be the vector 0, dy, 0. Right? I'm in the y direction. And I don't put a minus sign there because, again, that comes from the limits of integration. What about my e? Well, I said the magnitude, e perpendicular, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught qs over r cubed. But remember how we got that. I just want to remind you how you got that. Because this is an expression derived by taking the electric field due to the positive and negative charges and, so, and adding them up. So here I have a positive charge. It makes an electric field like this. I'll call that E plus. And then here I have a charge, a negative charge. I have an electric field like that. I get E minus. And when I add those two together, the Y component of the electric field cancels. And I just get this. E perpendicular in that direction. So that's important because this is actually going to be, if I write this, it's going to be negative 1, 0, 0. That's, if I want to turn that into a vector, it's in the negative x direction. Why does that matter? Well, now if I do EP dot DL, I get 0 times negative 1, DY times 0, 0 times 0. Oh, I'm sorry, not a vector, plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals 0. So every point as I move from infinity down to here, the electric field's perpendicular to the path, and so there's no change of potential. So if I set the potential at infinity to 0, over here it's 0 too. So VB is 0. Now I can put it all in. Delta V uh, A to B is going to be VB minus VA, 0 minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught QS over R squared. Now, if I put, I'm going to pick some values. We're going to, and I'm going to calculate this in a second. But let's say, I'm going to, what am I pick? I picked Q was uh, 1 times 10 to the negative ninth. S is, I just picked some numbers, 0 0.01 meters. This is coulombs. And uh, this distance from here to there, we'll call that, uh, what do I call it? I call that S. No, that can't be called S twice. Um, let's just call this P1X. P1X is 0 0.08 meters. P2Y is 0 0.08 meters. It's because I'm going to move from a point right here to a point right there, both 0 0.08 meters away. But this is my answer. 
Now, there's another way you could do this. Um, just I'm not going to do it. You could find the potential to any point uh, based on the potential due to individual point charge. So a point charge has a potential with respect to infinity of 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R. And so I can find this potential is the, is the sum of the potential due to these two points. One's negative, one's positive, one's closer, one's further, and the same thing up there. Uh, but I kind of like the integration method better. Okay, let's do this numerically now because we need to break this into some parts. So let me draw my uh, dipole again. Uh, there's my axis. So there's my negative charge, positive charge, and I want to move from here to there. But I want to do it into finite steps. So I'm going to have... Uh, I'm going to call this DL. I'll call it delta L for it now. Delta L. Delta L. I think I'm going to miss. Delta L. Yeah, well, you get it. Delta. They should be in a straight line. So I'm going to take step, finite step sizes. And so I need to find those delta Ls. And it's going to be easy because I'm moving in a straight line. Um, and let's call this P1 vector from here to there. Let's call this P2 vector. Uh, so that if I want to find delta L, I, let's say I have a step size of ds of 0 0.01. I don't even know, but let's pick something. That's my step size. Then I need to find this vector. I'll call that L. L is going to be equal to P2 minus P1. That's my total step size. But I need... I need to go this distance in that direction. So I actually am going to need L hat, which is L over the magnitude of L. And that will give me a unit vector in that direction. So delta L is going to be ds L hat. And so I can take my ball right here, move it, move it, move it, and that's the first thing I'm going to do. The next thing I'm going to do is to calculate the change of potential across just one of those steps. Because if the step size is small, I can say delta V is negative E dot delta L. I can do a dot product because I don't have to integrate. If E is constant over that step, which is true if it's a small step, then I can just do a dot product. And that will just be the step over the small little piece. Then the total change of potential is just going to be the sum of all the individual changes in potential. Okay, we've got a lot of Python stuff to do. Let's just jump into it and get started. And I already started, so surprise. I didn't start a lot. I just did a little bit. It's not a big deal, right? I just entered in my constant K. That's the 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Q is the charge in the dipole. S is the separation. And then I have the two points. Let's go ahead and draw everything. It's, I think it's useful to have a visual representation. So I'm going to put my charges uh, as spheres. Let's say uh, Q1, which I call it. Q1. Let's call it Q P for positive charge. It's going to be a sphere. Its position is, it's centered on the origin, right? So it's zero plus moved over s over two in the in the y direct x direction. So vector s over two zero zero. I need a radius. I'm going to go with what did I go with before so it looks good. S over two. Okay, let's just do s over two. S over two, and let's give it a color. This is the positive one, so it's going to be red. Red is positive. Color. Oops. Color equals color dot red. I lost my thing. That's what I did. Let's see. Laptop camera. There. Okay. And let's make the negative. Qn is the same thing. Except it's going to be negative s over 2. Uh, and its color is going to be cyan. I would do blue for yellow, for for negative, but uh, cyan shows up better. Let's run this. Okay, it looks dumb, but it's fine. Uh, now I want to put point one and point two as points. So let's call this uh, PS1. That's just my uh, P1S. It's it's a sphere. Its position is P1. Its radius is s over 2. And then p2, s, is a sphere. Its position is p2. Its radius is s over 2. Let's just see what that looks like. Where'd the other sphere go? Oh, I know I did. I put them both in the same spot. It's 2. I put p2. 
Okay, there. So I'm going to move from here to there, and those points are too big. Let's make this S over 5. Let me make it. Looks do matter. All right, that looks better. So I'm going to move from here to there. And that's the first thing. I'm not going to calculate anything. I'm just going to move it. I'm going to move my, my observation location. So let's make that as a sphere. RO is a sphere. Position is going to be equal to P1. It's at, that's where it's at. Its radius is going to be equal to, let's put it at S over 3. Color equals color dot yellow. Make trail equals true. You can't see that. That's fine. Okay. Now um, I need to find my, my delta L. My, I'm going to call it DL. So let's say uh, DS is, oh, let's say DS. I don't want to make it the same size as S. So let's say it's 0 0.1 times S, smaller. And then um, L is P2 minus P1, right? That's the vector, just like it drew. L hat is going to be norm L, which I don't really have to do that, but anyway. And so now I can get my DL. It's just going to be DS times L hat. I, mean, I don't have to change that. It's the same every time. I'm taking the same sub size. Now I can make a loop while ro.pos.x is greater than p2.x, right? I need to say, how do I end my loop? I can keep moving in the x direction. I'm actually moving at an angle to my x values are no longer greater than that. So if you put in rate 100, it's going to only do 100 steps per second so we can see it. And I'm just going to move my object. RO equals RO uh, plus, no, RO.POS. RO.POS is RO.POS plus DL. And that should do it. Let's save the code because you never know. Save. Run. There you go. So I moved the thing. Now, the next thing I want to do is to calculate the electric field. So in this case, calculating the electric field, um, I, need, I need to create the sum of the two electric fields through the positive and negative charges. So I'm going to go ahead and make a function to calculate the electric field. It's not hard, but I'm going to do it anyway. You could do it individually, but let's just make a function. So I'm going to put it down here. Let's just put it right here. Def E. I'm going to give it a temporary vector, ROT, op temporary observation location. I feel like my thing's smaller than normal. That looks a bit better. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is to calculate the two R vectors. RP is going to be ROT minus QP.POS, right? QP.POS is the vector position of the charge, the positive charge. Rn is the vector from the negative charge, ROT uh, minus QN.POS. And now I can just plug in my, I can calculate my temporary electric field. Let's just do that. Uh, e temp equals um, K times Q times norm RP divided by mag RP squared. So what I'm doing here, this is just the electric field due to a point charge. This is the electric field due to the positive charge. I use the positive R vector and I have a positive Q. Now I need to add in the electric field due to the negative charge, which is going to be negative K times Q, that's where my negative comes in, times norm, norm Rn divided by mag Rn squared. So this is the exact value of the electric field due to a point charge, due to a dipole, right? I'm not making any approximations. So that's, that's it. I'm just doing it. And now I'm going to return the function. So I'm going to return E temp. So that sh I should be able to give any vector location and it returns the vector value of the electric field at that point. So let's just try and see if I can draw that electric field on the charge. So let's make an arrow. Um, I, I know I'm going to have to use this. E scale equals 1. Uh, so because my, I'm going to calculate the value of the electric field, but I'm going to draw it in space. So I need a conversion factor. And it's just a, a you just pick a value that looks good because it's not a real length, right? E arrow equals arrow. Uh, position 
is going to be ro.pos. I want it attached to the to the object. The axis is going to be the vector value of the arrow, and it's es times the electric field, which is e ro.pos. So I'm going to pass to it the vector value of the location of my charge, calculate the electric field, and display it there. And then let's make the the color equals color dot cyan. My two favorite colors in WebVPython, if you have a black background, are yellow and cyan. That's just me. You pick your own colors. Okay. So there I'm moving my object. I'm going to now move my arrow. So e arrow.pos equals ro.pos. And then I need to redraw the length of the vector. So e arrow.axis equals es times e ro.pos. And that should work. Let's see what happens. I know it's going to be too big because my scale was uh, 1. Okay, so too big. Let's make it uh, E scale. Let's try 0 0.01. That might be too small. No, not too small. Let's just add another zero in there. You can, some people like, hey, I'm going to print the magnitude and then calculate how big it should be and pick that for my E scale. I just change it up randomly. That's fine. Still too big. Now let's add another zero. That looks pretty good. Let me run that again. Good enough. Okay. So now we need to calculate the potential along each little part and then add up all those things. So to do that, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to make a, a variable called V. It should really be called DV, I guess. No, let's call it VV. So along each path, I'm going to do E dot negative E dot DL. And in order to add them up, I need to add it to something. That's my something. Okay, I need something to add it to. That's my something to add it to. So down here, I'm, let's calculate it before we move. You could do it before or after. It shouldn't really matter too much. Uh, DV is going to be the, the potential along that step. It's negative dot product of E at RO.POS and delta L. And then I'm going to add that. VV equals VV plus DV. And then at the end, I just print out delta V. Print DV equals VV, and it would be in volts, space volts. Let's see if this works. OK, it's moving. And I get negative 14.03. OK, now we're going to calculate my theoretical change uh, that I calculated before. Where's my equation? It's right, it's right there. Remember, we did that before. Okay, so this is my theoretical change. I mean, I could, yeah. Let's just cal let's just calculate it theoretically. So uh, dv theoretical is equal to k times q times s divided by r squared. Okay, so r is let's use that's p1 dot x or magnitude of p1 mag p1 squared and let's print that print no it's not it's zero min final is zero minus that so it's going to be negative uh print dvt equals dvt volts There it goes, it's moving. Watch it move. Scroll down. Boom, there you go. That worked quite nicely, if I must say so myself. Um, so we've calculated the change in electric potential around this dipole from two to, to these points two different ways. Now, there are other ways you could do this, right? Um, like I said, you could calculate the potential at each point. But I do want to point out one more thing. 
Which one of these methods is better? The numerical method or the, uh, the change in potential method? Technically, the numerical method is better. Okay, here's why. Whoops. Because the other, the first method, the analytical method, I used the electric field as one over R cubed and then one over R cubed, which turned out to be a zero potential. But that's the far field approximation of the dipole. That makes the approximation that this distance is great compared to that. The other way, I calculated the exact electric field. Now, however, I did break it into finite steps, but I can easily make my step size smaller. So they're not quite the same thing, but they're pretty close. Now, the fun part, and I'm not going to do this, is your homework assignment. Make it move from point one to point two along a curved path, a circular path, and calculate the change in potential. It should be the same thing because it's a conservative field, so the, the, the change in potential does not depend on the path. Link to the code down below. If you want to see any of those other related videos, if you put a comment, you know I'm going to reply. Unless that comment is like in two years from now, and then I'll read the comment. I'm like, I don't even remember what that video was about. So comment in the next week probably going to get you the best thing. And if this is, if you're finding this uh, eight weeks from now or a year from now, then you're going to have to build a time machine, go back in time, and then leave the comment. I'll see the comment. I just won't know what's going on. So, Okay. Hope you enjoyed that. I had fun.